here are the supplies that we're gonna need for this. A cooler, this is just an Igloo $23 cooler that we got from Walmart. You can get any cooler you want, but we feel better about putting holes in a $23 <laughs> uh, cooler. But this is a little PVC elbow. Boy, PVC is getting real expensive, but this is like $12. Um, this is a 12 volt fan that we can plug into a car or you can plug into um, our solar generators and then you'll need a little bit of tools to make holes and then we have some sealant uh, to seal the holes for that so let's show you how to do it okay so these are the two holes that's gonna be the fan and that is the uh, little elbow pvc elbow that we just got go one two three Blam. Okay, it's time to insert the fan. What a perfect hole has been did. So the fan, so I actually misunderstood this at first too. For some reason I was thinking the fan went up and you know, pushed the cold air up. But no, that's not what's happening here. What's happening is the cold, uh, the air is being pushed down into the cooler and then the cool air is gonna be pushed out through that tube. So there we go. So now we're just gonna seal her up. All right. We decided we're going to use some uh, heavy duty construction glue, some Gorilla construction adhesive to, uh, to glue our parts in. It's waterproof and all that. Whole surface and waterproof and yeah. All right, so we glued it all up and um, this, this feels pretty stable. Uh, husband wants to just make sure that that's stable enough so there's just that tape just we're, we're leaving that propped up to kind of keep this in place while it permanently sets. So what I'm going to do is I have one of my solar chargers here, my power banks, and I'm going to go ahead and um, we're going to turn it on and we're going to plug it in because, you know, in this is really for an emergency. Oops. So I want to make sure that this is going to be able to power it and everything's going to be good with that. So power it there. All right. So no watts. So he's going to turn it on. There we go. All right, nice. That looks great. Six watts, eight watts, anywhere between six and nine watts. That's good. That's the real fan, good. The fan is advertised as a 10 watt fan. Yeah, so that's, that's amazing. So, um, yeah, so this is a thousand watt uh, generator here. So let's, um, we're gonna measure the temperature. There's, so, <clears throat> So there's nothing in here. There's nothing in here right now. So we're just gonna measure the temperature of what's coming out. Um, what is it? 77.5. 77, so the exact temperature of the room. <laughs> the room is 77 degrees. <laughs> so accurate. <laughs> so the way that this works is that you put ice in it. So we're gonna get a bunch of ice. Now, here's the thing about this. Like, I want this for emergencies. So you may be thinking, how the heck are you gonna be getting ice in an emergency? I will tell you. My freezer, of course. I did a video a while back about using my Okmo 2000 watt generator, and I can use that to keep my freezer going, and we can make ice with our freezer. We got these two, um, or these four, big blocks and we filled them with water. The bigger the blocks, I think the more efficient it's gonna be in it. You can put any kind of ice in it, ice, right? Um, so they're definitely not frozen. I, I did this like an hour or two ago. Uh -huh. so, so one of the good things about a big block of ice is a big block of ice is not gonna melt as fast as a bunch of little blocks of ice. Yeah. So we'll be able to cool the air down and uh, using a big block in the cooler is gonna last longer. Keep it cooler, yeah. So I, yeah, so I don't know if you can see how big it is. I don't really wanna move anything, but yeah, right there, it'll about right there. Okay, another way, which I think is a very interesting idea, we were talking about it, and you could get a countertop um, 
a, a countertop ice cube maker. And here is my thought process. So you get the countertop um, ice cube maker, you can plug it into your power bank, right? Whatever generator or power bank or whatever that you have, plug it into that and you're gonna be making constant ice. Now, I have those, and those run around like 100 to 150 watts, which is great, perfect, right? So make a whole bunch of ice from that. Here's the real beauty of this. No matter what ice that you're making, no matter how you're making it, you can take the melted water from here and just remake the ice. So you could take water, so take your ice, put it in here, refill those ice cubes with water. Once all of this is melted in here, take the ice cubes from there, put it in here, take this water and fill up those ice cubes and the circle just continues. I think that that's such a efficient, you know, reusing, recycling of the, that uh, water. So anyway, um, you know, of course you're gonna get a little bit less water over time, you know, that kind of thing. So you, you had to fill a little bit, but not as much, you know, so, okay, he's gonna fill it. Hold it, don't know all the way over. Okay, so we... <laughs> ice just from our freezer this works out anyway because we got to get this out of here it's good to have nice fresh ice in it that's a that's a good amount of ice yeah. all right it's all filled with ice it's plugged into the power bank so let's go ahead and turn it on and let it roll for a little bit um before we Sixty-nine. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's cooler than seventy-seven. <laughs> yeah. Sixty-nine is great. What we're going for here is not like ice cold temperatures. We're wanting just a cooler temperature. Even just a little bit of cooler air is gonna be so nice in your hot home. Now, a couple things with this is that wherever you use this, you wanna use it in a close a kind of close off space like we're kind of in like a big space right now so with these kinds of things you want to use it in a more confined space like and in the coolest room of your house like our bedroom is the coolest room in the house and it's a, a smaller space for us all to hang out with take this in there let this run in there with the door closed and so now we have a cool room in the house uh, for us to go to you know, you're not trying to heat an entire house with this. That's not the purpose of this. But, uh, still 69? 66! What? That's fantastic. Let's feel it. Let's feel it. It's still nice, cool air. I mean, so my question is, how long is this ice going to last? That's my biggest question. So, so I have a theory that we're going to test in, uh, in, in the upgraded version 2 already, I'm thinking is uh, I, right now there's this little pipe and it ends about right here. So the air's coming in and it's coming right out. I'm wondering if we add a little bit of a down tube to maybe halfway down, it's gonna have to draw the air from closer to the ice. I'm wondering if that would make the air colder. I'm wondering if uh, a little bit, colder. I'm wondering if a little bit more of the warmer air is making a cut straight across and out. Yeah. if that makes sense so yeah. we're going to test that uh next time yeah and the cooler is cooling down as well you know like yeah. like we just put the ice in so when the cooler really cools down yeah should get even 66. more 66 yeah that's pretty good i'm not even worried about this this is a thousand watt generator and it's pulling six watts well okay let's say let's just calculate eight watts hold on 1,000 watts divided by, uh, yeah, 1,000 watts divided by eight watts is 125 hours. That's amazing. So I'm not even concerned about this. So, and it keeps fluctuating between six and eight. So that's fine, whatever. I'm not concerned that, you know, is this gonna last, you know, very long. I can always charge it. I can well recharge it with these solar panels. I'm not even worried about that. So this draws such an insignificant amount of power. Because the biggest problem with ACs, even window units or the little like um, evaporative coolers, unless you make it yourself, that kind of thing. We've made an evaporative cooler before, but we're in a drier area. So we need something that like this is going to produce cold air without 
building up a bunch of um, moisture inside and potentially causing mold, which the evaporative coolers could do here in this really humid environment. But the whole point, you know, those those really those AC units, the the window units, and the little bit bigger units, you know, uh, Iridium uh, has done a bunch of reviews, not a bunch, but a couple of reviews of those kinds of things. They're like 500 watts, which that's a lot of watts if you're, you know, off grid kind of thing, you know. Uh, we we just lived on fans, literal just fans when we were living in the desert. We didn't even have anything like this. We had the evaporative cooler, and sometimes we turn on our RV AC if we turned on our gas generator, but air conditioners take a lot of power but i love this setup and i love that we're able to create ice from our freezer or if we get like a countertop ice maker i think those are really solid ideas i will say it's not pushing like a ton of air like hard hard air it's pushing good air but it's not pushing like oh you know like you know ac air like oh in your face um but that would be dependent on this fan. So, you know, the fan is pushing downwards and then, you know, it's all flowing out kind of thing. So, but this is kind of the perfect fan for this. If you wanted to go a little bigger, you probably could. Um, it's just gonna take more wattage, you know, you just have to understand that. So, but yeah, you could definitely make a little bit bigger if you so choose. Maybe in our second version, we'll try a bigger fan and see how that works, but. Uh, close the door to that coolest room put this baby on and I, I think we would have a, a pretty comfortable room. You know, our, our everyday living is at 77 degrees, so <laughs> I, I think we'll be okay. <laughs> Just cooler air. So we are testing how long like the ice and, and all that. So um, it's been 55 minutes since we turned this on. Oh, 69. I just did it like, I swear it said 74. I don't know. Oh, that's right. I opened it, I closed it, and had to readjust, but it's still at 69. I just capped it at 74, like literally 30 seconds ago, and it, because I opened it, looked at the ice, and then I closed it again, so I had to like readjust the temperature inside, I guess, so yeah. 69, 70. He's a little crazy about the uh, noise. <laughs> It has been two and a half hours. 71, still going strong, pumping that cold air. I feel it good. This is not okay. Not a toy, buddy. All right. It's been three and a half hours. Oop, let's get this. There we go. 70 degrees still, three and a half hours. Let's look at the ice. definitely melting obviously but it's still a good chunk of ice there I say it has at least probably another couple hours all right it's been a total of five hours 72 oh, five hours a total of five hours this has been running and in between 69 and 72 hit a oh, man I was even wrong I thought most of the ice would be gone. Look at that, still a lot of ice left. I'm really impressed with this. This is just one layer of your, you know, cool down if there's no, uh, you know, there's no AC, you're right, there's no power. You know, you could have a pool, you, you know, have a shade. Um, you know, there's lots of things. We, we spent a whole year in Arizona with that hot weather with no AC, like I said before. And um, it's definitely doable. It's, uh, it takes a little bit of adjusting and in creativity and you know, um, maybe you need to just sit out in the shade, drink tons of water, you know what I mean? But this is one layer to all of that. And I think that this works really, really well, especially with everything that I've talked about with the, uh, with the ice maker or you know, keeping your freezer full of ice, whatever the case may be, so. Very handy, really love this. I'm gonna put exact instructions and supplies down below, but it's pretty dang simple. Thank you all so much for watching. Conquer tomorrow, we're creating today. Talk to you later, bye.